So good afternoon, everybody. Um, so today, in our introductory Photoshop class, I'm going to cover lesson six. I will come back to lesson five on Wednesday. But I feel it's lessons one through four and six that will really um, help you get started with your first assignment, which is the postcard assignment. Okay, and I can talk about that a little bit later too. Um, it won't take that long to do this lesson. So I'll come back to um, the postcard assignment and I'll talk about it at the very end. But this um, lesson six is important um, and it'll, you'll find that you'll use it a lot when you're isolating parts of an image to combine it with another. Um, so some of the features that we have in here if you'll note, if um, they didn't do a particularly good job in the lesson themselves, um, excuse me, <laughs> but I hope to do a little bit better than them. <laughs> excuse me. Is that um, what I want to do is I want to isolate the woman from the background, and they've done that, but you'll notice that the edge of her hair is fairly crisp. There's a few strands of hair here, but I want to maintain more of them here. And there's a few strands up here, loose strands. And it's really good for the tool that I'll be showing you is really, really good for um, isolating um, images like this, people with hair with subtle little strands that you want to keep. Um, in addition to that, you know, if you have animals like lions or dogs or cats with fur and things like that, or maybe trees and stuff, um, grass, with subtle intri intricacies that um, you want to maintain that would be very difficult to isolate um, in other fashions. So, you know, using the other tools that we've, we've covered so far. So that's what we're going to do. In addition to that, we'll show you how to bend her head back, which is kind of easy. That's using Puppet Warp. How to use a selection that we've created to create um, the, the shadow for her, which is not using um, the effects layer. It's creating, it's using it based on the mask we create for her. And we're gonna colorize her glasses. So that's pretty much it. And um, I guess the skew tool to skew the, the, um, <clears throat> the shadow. But to get things started, I'm going to go ahead and take her image. And as I say, most of the time I like making copies. So I'll hit Command J. And we'll work on the copy. And I'll turn off the background layer. And I'm going to start by using the object selection tool. So that's found under here. And it's the, right here, it's the object selection tool. And I'm just going to click and drag around her very loosely and see what it does. And it does a pretty darn good job. But you'll notice that it cuts off some of the additional strands of hair and the ones that we see back here. And that's what we want to add. But before I do, um, I need to take note and notice, for example, that um, part of her dress was not captured here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in. And to add that, I'm going to switch from the object to the quick selection tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's see, I'm going to enlarge the brush just a little bit. And I'm going to click and just drag in here, and it will automatically add. If you want to remove from a selection, you hold down the Option key. So that does a pretty good job. There we go. That's good enough. That's close enough for our purposes. Um, I might want to try to add some of the uh, her hairs back here. Let's see how that works. And that's sort of, eh, I don't like that. We'll try to add them later. And I'll try to remove some of the selection right here. So I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key and click some of that here. 
and then I'll have to re-add, you know, some of this back here. There we go. Okay, so I've got a pretty good selection going here. Didn't take long at all. And now what I want to do is I want to use the feature up above here. Let me move this up. And it's called Select and Mask. And this will allow me to create a soft mask, one that blends part of the background and part of the, you know, uh, isolating the image, but at the same time, allowing me to take some of the more subtle parts. So I'm going to go ahead and say Select and Mask. And when I do that, notice that it brings up another dialog box over here. <clears throat> so what I want to do, <clears throat> scroll up to the top. And <clears throat> in the very top here, I want to select where it has on background layers. Now, what I didn't do, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel this for, real quick. And yeah, I want to make sure that she's selected. I want to turn off the group that I have up here because I, that's probably getting in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm going to go ahead and say select and mask. And of the default selections, if I were to come back up here and select this, you can use onion skinning, which leaves part of the background. You can also use the overlay if that helps you. So you can see what has been isolated and what, what hasn't been isolated. And that works very well. Sometimes you want a black and white mask to see what that looks like. And the one that I prefer oftentimes or at the very end is the one on layer. So I can see what it's going to look like in the very end once I isolate her. In the meantime, though, I'm going to select overlay real quick. And I'm going to take and I'm going to, let's see. Make sure that that's selected. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to select um, under edge protection. I'm going to use smart radius. And we'll go ahead and we'll move that up a couple of pixels. OK. Um, maybe two pixels. I'll come in here and change that. Just so we can detect. No, I don't want 12 pixels. I want two pixels. Come on. I've got a rendering going in the background. Yeah, it doesn't like what I just did. So let me come back here. And I want to get rid of the one. There we go. So we have two pixels. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take with a fairly small brush and I'm going to kind of move it in between her hair and the background. And you'll notice that as I begin to move it around, and I'm not being too careful with this, that I will um, gradually begin to add some of those soft hairs that I was talking about. That you may not see it at the moment, but I want to make sure that I've added all of them, like the little soft little hairs from a bun here that are left over. And I'm going to bring in some of the soft strands of hair that I see behind her head. Right. And I want to get rid of some of the ones from here. So I'm going to hold down the Option key and get rid of some of that. All right. and let's see how that works. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to switch from the overlay <clears throat> to the on layers to see what I have. And you can see that I've added some of those soft strands here, some of the soft strands here. And I can go over some of that a little bit to add. I can also hold down the Option key to remove some of them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I can't add some of those here. And I am. I guess I shouldn't have removed. I want to add to get some of those soft strands. And when I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to do the following. I'm checking the rest of this out, make sure that it's OK. And there are subtle little changes, but they're um, important in um, that if you're not careful, it will be a, a clear detection 
by the viewer that something has been retouched. And by keeping these little subtle strands of hair um, in the photograph, it will be a bit, you'll be doing a better job. So now what I wanna do down here is I can add feather to it, which I want. If I wanna smooth some of this out, I can. I really don't need to. I can shift the edge inward or outward a little bit if I want. I can add contrast. But what I do wanna do, I don't need to really change any of these, but what I do wanna do is I wanna decontaminate the background colors and that will automatically remove some of those. And then when I output it, I can output it as a selection or what I can have it do is I want it to output it as a new layer with a layer mask. And that is my preferred way of doing this. So it leaves again, the original layer intact. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna see if I can't add some of these again. There we go. Well, that's close enough for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And you can see that it turned off the background layer and I now have her isolated from the background. Okay. Um, and the next step that we want is maybe to colorize her glasses. And then what we want to do is we want to um, uh, bend her head. But to do that, we need to take this layer and I'm going to copy it and again, you don't have to copy it. The book doesn't say to copy it, but I like keeping it in case I need to go back. But I need to get rid of this layer mask. And that's what's really critical in here, um, the layer masks in order because they're non-destructive unless you choose them to be. So for example, if I were to take this one and I were to just click on the mask and drag it in the trash, it's gonna ask me, do do I want to apply the mask or do I want to delete the mask? If I click this, it takes me back to where I was pretty much. And I don't want to do that. I'm going to bring that back and I'm going to go back. And this time I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and I'm going to throw the mask away since I've already copied the layer and I want to apply the mask. So now it's a flattened image, no layer mask, but she's been completely isolated from the background. And now I see this digital background behind her, which is what I want. So the next step, as I said, is I probably want to uh, make a copy of this as well, because I'm going to colorize her glasses. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command J, co copy that, turn that off. And again, do you have to make copies of these layers? No, you do not. But if in the event that you want to go back and re um, work some of it, it will make your job easier so you don't have to start over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same tool that I did before. I'm going to use the object selection and I'm going to click and drag around her glasses. Okay, and see what it does. It does a pretty good job. So I need to come in here. I need to add some elements to some aspects of this to her glasses. So again, I'll switch to the quick selection tool. I can click in here, add, you know, parts of it, maybe a little bit over here that need to be added just a little bit here. And that's looking pretty good, but I need to remove where her lens is. So I'm gonna zoom in, maybe not that much. And I'm going to make the quick selection tool a little bit smaller using the left bracket key. And I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key. And I'm going to click and drag in here and see where it gets me. Now, I've removed pixels that I don't want removed, but I'm going to focus on the lens first. And I'm going to get rid of those. And then I'll come back and I'll add some pixels. So I'm adjusting the size of the brush so it doesn't take too much out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Option. Okay, see where it gets me. And now I need to probably add some of those pixels back in. So I'm going to use a really tiny brush. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag in here to 
bring some of those pixels back. So this takes a little bit of finessing. <clears throat> now I've already done this. And you'll notice that I have a group up here. So I'm going to deselect this and I'm going to turn her layer off and I'm going to go up to my group that I created here. And I want to select her. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. Okay, not that one because I already fixed her glasses. So this is the one that I did without fixing her glasses, but I saved the selection. So once you have that selection, if you want to save the selection and bring it up, bring it up at any time in the future, you go up to the select and you say that you want to save selection. Now this is grayed out because I don't have a selection, but you'll notice that I have one here that I can turn on and that shows the that way. Or if I want to see the marching ants, I hold down the command key and I click on that channel. And now I brought up my selection. So now I can come back to layers and I can work on the layer copy right here that I have here, the one that I've made. Now, in order to colorize this, you need to pick a foreground color. And so I took that from my swatch panel here. And then what we're going to do is under the brush icon, I want to use the color replacement tool. And it will take from the foreground color. And all I have to do with that selection is I have to come in here and just paint. And notice that it's leaving the grayscale. It's leaving all the detail. No, I don't want that. Come on. There we go. It's leaving all the detail, but it's allowing me to colorize her glasses. Now, if I'm happy with that, I'll zoom out and I'll deselect. And now her glasses have been colorized. <clears throat> now, I want to turn this layer off so I can see what I'm doing here. So now I have this flattened layer with her glasses colorized. Um, the next step is that I want to um, bend her head back. And then again, in order to do that, you need to have a flattened layer. You can't have a layer mask attached to it. So what I'll do now to bend it back is I'm going to use a tool under the edit tool, the edit menu here, called Puppet Warp. And when I select the layer and I use Puppet Warp, notice the little um, triangles that appear on here. Well, what I need to do is that I need to fix some of these elements in place and then allow other parts of her head to rotate or to bend or to be distorted. This can be used for any number of things. So with Puppet Warp selected, I'm going to go ahead and let me move this back up here. I'm going to now fix some of these elements. So if I click in here, you'll notice I'm adding these little push pins. And what they do is they fix. You need to click on an intersection point. And then I'll click here. And then I'm going to click back here. And then I'm going to click here. Let's move this over a little bit. Because the parts that I'm clicking, I don't want to move. I want them to be fixed. So that's what these little push pins do. I may have too many. I may not have enough. We'll see. I'm going to zoom out. And now to get her hand, head to bend back, I click on this push pin. You'll notice that it highlights. It's a little bit activated. And now when I hold down the Option or Alt key, a little ring appears around the outside. And now when I click and I drag, you'll notice that it allows me to bend her head back. Okay. And when I'm happy with it, I click the checkbox. If I'm not happy with it, I deselect it and I go back and I make, you know, another selection. But I'm happy with what I have, so I'll click it. So now her head has been 
rotated backwards. So that's the next step. So we've isolated her. We've used puppet warp to bend her head back. And now the next step we want to do is we want to use this selection, this image here, to create a, a drop shadow for her. One that clearly reflects that we can bend and manipulate and do what we want with. So the next thing that I want to do is I need to make a copy of her once again, Command J. And in order to um, make a selection of her head, all I have to do is hold down the Command key and click on the icon in the Layers panel. And you'll notice that it, it selects everything. And because this is a copy of that layer, what I want to do now is I want to hit, I want to make sure that I have black as the foreground color. So I'm going back over here and clicking the default foreground color and background color. And I have black as a foreground color and I'm going to hit option delete to fill it with black. So now I filled it with black. Um, that's my shadow. So I need to move it below her now in the layers panel. And that's beneath. I can deselect it now. And now I'm ready to skew it. And so to do that, I'm going to, with the shadow layer selected, I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go under transform. I'm going to select skew. And you'll notice this little box appears. And if I go ahead and I click on the middle button here and I hold down the shift key and I bring it over. You see that her shadow appears, but it's a black shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it because I like the position of it. But I want to add some you know, some transparency to it. So now with that layer selected, I can go ahead here and I can, with opacity, I can adjust it until I see and it's probably maybe 35% or so. And voila, we've done. So in less than a half an hour, we've completed the assignment. So as you're working on your postcard assignment and you're combining elements, and if you're combining elements with soft edges, this would be the way to do it. If you need to manipulate or distort any of the image <clears throat> after the fact, then what you can also do is that you can use pup, um, parts of the program like puppet work. And they do a really, really nice job of bending and warping um, so that it fits, you know, to your desired specifications. Are there any questions so far? Because that's the lesson in a nutshell. Um, what I want to cover next, though, and I believe I've already gone over this once, but I want to go over it again, is how you need to come. Um, how you should, excuse me, how you should begin your first assignment, which is the postcard assignment. <clears throat> now, you can work, I know that I specified that it's supposed to be black and white, but if you want it to be color, it can. If you want to convert it to black and white, you can do that too. We can cover that on another day. But I want to make sure that um, since this class normally works with images that are designed to be printed, I want to make sure that you're working at the correct resolution. So to do that, <clears throat> um, if there aren't any questions, no? No Q&A? No? No? OK. So to get started with a new file, and this is what I recommend, um, <clears throat> you need to first find a desirable image that you're going to use for your background. And that will determine whether it's going to be a vertical or a horizontal piece. And the next step is to determine the size of the postcard and the resolution that you're going to work with. And for this assignment, it really should be maybe five by seven inches or seven by five inches. So I'm going to get File, New. And this is you know <clears throat> like working with a, a blank canvas. So pretend I'm, you know, I've decided that I want it to be horizontal. So it's seven inches by five inches. And the, really the minimum 
pixel resolution or the resolution that you should use is maybe between 200, 240 pixels per inch. Um, opti uh, optimally, you should be able to use um, 300 pixels per inch. Um, that would be the best, but 240 is fine for most of us. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. And now if I zoom out here, I can actually close. I'm gonna go back up to window and arrange. And I'm just gonna say that I want consolidate into tabs so I can just see my image now. So now I have my blank canvas and I can bring other elements into this. Okie doke. So let me, um, to get you started here, let me find an image for you. So I had a mountain image before. So let me see if I still have it on my desktop. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go file, um, open. And I don't know if it's still there, but if it's not, then I'll go ahead and I'll grab one off the internet and show you how to do that. So I'm gonna to go to the desktop. Let's see what images I have here. Um, is that it? It was one of a mountain that I had. No, these are some of my images. Um, no, you know, I don't have anything that I want. So I'm going to do some searching here on the internet. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to create a new tab. And I'm just going to call um, do a um, landscapes. Oh, come on. So I'm doing a simple Google search. Okay. There are lots of them here, potential ones. I don't want landscapes to draw. I just want landscapes. So let's go ahead and let's look at images, see what pops up. No, I don't want images to draw. There we go, that's better. So what do we have here? Let me find an interesting landscape. Something that I can combine other elements. <clears throat> so I think, um, let's try the next thing. I need to make sure that it's a, because I'm looking at images that are both large and small I should probably look at tools and I'm gonna to go to size and I want large images so that it removes all the small ones. So, you know, maybe this one, I'll go ahead and I'll take this one here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. Let's see how big it is. That's not a bad one, 1600 by 900 pixels, mm, not very big but for our purposes, big enough. So I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna save the image to the desktop. You can save it wherever you like, but I'm saving mine to the desktop. And I'll just call it unusual landscape, leave the default setting here. I'm gonna make sure that desktop is selected so I can find it easily. There we go. And I'm going to push this to the side. And now let's go ahead and open the file. So Photoshop open. I'm going to go file open. Now remember, you with your assignment, you need to bring four images together, at least four. So I'm going to go to my desktop. And let's see if I can't find it. Uh, Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there's a beach image, blender files. Come on, come on, come on, come on.
why don't I see it? So let's look at it this way. I'm going to show as a list. And I'm going to show date modified. And there it is. There's my landscape image. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. It's going to take a second here. There we go. So now I want to combine this <clears throat> with my untitled image that I just created. So I use the move tool, click and drag up to the new image that I just created, pull it down, hold down the shift key and release. And you can see that it needs a little bit of manipulation. It doesn't need too much manipulation, 240 pixels per inch, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to scale it up. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and pick the whole image and I'm gonna go to edit. And what I wanna do is I want to use content aware scale for that image. And hopefully I can get an image. If I hold down the shift and option key, I can make it big from here. And I'll probably have to crop some of it. And for our purposes, perfect, just fine. And it still maintains its detail. It doesn't look too um, pixelated or anything. And now what I need to do is I need to drop other images into this that look like they'll fit. Well, I have one on my desktop. I believe I still have it and I do. So let me see. Um, I'm moving things up here if I can see it. And I want, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and open this one. Again, it's gonna take a second for it to load. And the reason it's so slow on my computer right now is I have something else rendering in the background. I have a whole bunch of programs that I got going on at the same time. So, you know, taxing all the memory on my computer and it's causing everything to slow down a little bit. But now I'm gonna, you know, I have another major image and here it is, here's my dog bagel, okay? So what I wanna do is I want to find, and I have an, an image already. Um, you know what, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna so select all of these layers and I'm gonna discard some of the ones that I don't use. So, cause I can't remember myself which ones I've got here. I think I got this one. I'm going to take this one. So I'm going to hold down the command key. And I want to take, I just want the image of my dog and that's it. So that's this one. So I just need this layer. That's it. <clears throat> so if I turn off these other layers, um, you can see that I've isolated her from the background, including the shadow. And you can see that I used <clears throat> the tool that I just demonstrated in order to get some of the soft, you know, fluffy feathers from her. And now what I want to do is I want to bring her into <clears throat> the other scene that I just created. So I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to click and drag and bring it into that untitled image, bring it down here. And let's see if this works. Whoa, see that's a big image. Much, much bigger than what I need, which is actually kind of good. So now I can hit Command T to transform. Hold down the Shift and the Option key, shrink it down to size. And I might have to rotate it a little bit. I might have to adjust the perspective a little bit. And I probably have to add some other adjustment layers to see, make sure that the, whoops, to make sure that the color matches. Um, 
Notice that the shadow really doesn't match. So that's something that I would have to take into consideration. You know, so maybe I should bring in an image of her without the shadow. But if it looks believable, then so be it. It looks pretty, it can look pretty good. So there I've got that. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit, um, it's a good size. I could make her a little bit smaller maybe. I don't know how big that tree is. And that sort of puts her into per, in perspective too, and that helps. Okay, now I can add some text. I can also specific to this layer, I can add an adjustment layer. So maybe because it is a bright sunny day, maybe I need to lighten her up a little bit. So maybe one of the adjustment layers that I could apply to this could be um, let's start with um, levels and I'm going to go ahead and select auto. Now I don't need to brighten everything up. I just need to brighten her up. So I'm going to hold down the option key, move in between and make sure that it's just her that's, that's affected. And so now I can play with the settings. I can come in here and with levels selected, I can come in and I can adjust. And if I need to make her lighter, I can. If I need to make her darker, because um, the shadows on the tree are pretty, pretty, um, pretty dark. So maybe you know the front side of her is in shadow, and I need to make her pretty dark. Okay, in order to make that work. Now I need to move her a little bit closer or I need to add to that leash because that's part of that, it's gone. But now I have an image that's five by seven. It's 240 pixels per inch. I have two images. Now I need to add two more. Maybe there's a plane in the background. There's a series of birds. I could add another dog, another animal. I could do a variety of things. And then in addition to that, I need to add some text. So this is how you should, you know, go about getting started with your first assignment that will be due in maybe three weeks. And while we are working on that assignment, I will be doing additional lessons as well. Okay, so let me select her. Let me bring her down a little bit. There we go. Okie doke. Do, are there any questions from any of you? And yeah, it didn't take me long, but a couple of minutes to do this. So um, let me bring up participants. Let me look at um, here. Let's bring up the chat. No. Well, if there aren't any questions, then can the shadow be moved? No, it can't. So I would have to do that differently. So if I wanted to do that differently, because I, I was thinking that the, I would have to do it the way we did with a girl. So if I want to do that, let's, let's, I have 15 minutes or so. So let's give that a try. I'm going to go back to the bagel image here. And let me see if I can't I'm going to re let's see, I'm going to pick her layer and I'm going to very quickly remove um, with a quick selection tool. I'm going to remove the shadow. So that's one. So let me, I'm trying to make the brush bigger here. Okay, let me click and drag in here. Oh, come on. I want the quick selection tool and I don't want to, let's see. There we go. 
So let's go ahead and add to this. Let's go ahead and remove. So her foot still in there. And this is going to be quick. Yeah, not too quick, huh? As I said, because I have lots of other things going on in my There we go. So I have most of the shadow removed here. Now I got to remove part of the selection from her foot. So this isn't going to be the greatest job in the world. That would have been something that I should have thought of from the get go here. Um, come on, come on, come on. Let's go ahead. Oh, slow computer, slow computer. So with that selection, let me go ahead and hit delete and see what I get. There we go. So you can see there's a little bit of a fringe of an outline. And technically I should come in here with the eraser tool. <clears throat> I should erase that. I'm going to go ahead and erase the, the leash too. I took all of that. Normally I would probably leave that in there. So now I have to come back and I'm going to create a shadow for her. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to bring it back in. Can we make a layer, remove the dog and keep the shadow? Yeah, you can do that. Um, I'm doing a little bit differently. Um, add that to a shadowless picture of the dog. Yes, that, well, that's sort of what I'm doing now. I'm going to come back in here now and I'm going to move her into this image. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's turn this layer off. Let's turn this one off. Come on. I thought I removed it. Okay, let me turn all this off. So let me go back again. Let's take this layer. Let's turn that off. And with just this layer selected, I want to go ahead and move it inside. So up here, bring it in. Now, why don't I see her? There we go. Well, that needs to be moved out of the, let's see. There we go, that's why. So I'm goofing up here a little bit. Let me hit Command T to transform, whoops. Command T to transform, shrink her down a bit. Let's turn off these other images. Okay, so now I have her, okay? So similar to what we did with her, uh, the woman in the lesson, I need to create a shadow for her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to make a copy of it, Command J. 
I'm going to hold down the command key and make a selection. Now I'm going to fill it with black. Okay, but now I need it to lay down flat. So deselect, and I'm going to go ahead and put the shadow underneath. There we go. So here's our shadow. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use either the skew tool or I can use the um, under edit. There's any number of transform tools that I can use. So under transform, let's go ahead and let's use the distort tool. <clears throat> and now what I can do is I can, if this goes off to the side and it needs to be flattened, I can flatten this like so. Okay. And then I can skew it. I can move it off to the side so that it's kind of like the, the tree. And I can move this into position like so. We can move part of this up. And then we could do, if we need to, we can use the parts of it. So to get it to fit, now it's off to the side. Is this making sense to you? And now I go ahead and I, um, again, close enough for government work right now. Now I need to change the opacity of it. Although not by much, because you can see that the shadow from the tree is fairly dark, but I don't know that it's absolute black, but maybe, um, you know, could be 80, 85% opacity. And then you can paint in on that layer by hand if you wish. You can continue to distort it a bit more, but I'm trying to get this done quickly so that you can get an idea of how to do that. Now I can add an adjustment layer to her to brighten up the colors of her, her fur. I can enhance the shadow side of her and, you know, make it look believable. So those are all the little nuanced things that you need to do in order to um, combine elements together. It's helpful if you, when you combine elements, that the light source is the same for all of them. Then you don't need to worry about, you know, is there's a shadow match? Do I need to create a separate shadow? But in some instances like this one, maybe you do. Okay. So does that helpful? Yeah, there isn't any one way of doing this. Um, there are multiple ways, and that's the point of doing the lessons is to learn how to use the tools, master them, and then use them, you know, as you need to. Um, and they can be used in any number of ways, a combination of elements that maybe are unique to this, this particular image, and that's it. Okie doke. Any more questions? So that's how I would, I would do it. I would bring an image in if I really had to recreate the shadow from scratch, similar what, to what we did with the, the girl, or in this case, my dog Bagel. Um, I would create an image of her, you know, isolated without the shadow, and then I would bring her in, and then I would do what I just did, but, you know, finesse the shadow a bit more, try to make sure that it's stretched and fit. And if I had to hand paint it a little bit to make it fit, Remember that shadows do touch the edge of the feet. And they sort of do that now, but I might want to paint some of it in a little bit. I could also soften the edge of, the sh of, of it a little bit. So there are various ways of doing that, and I can cover that um, next time. So right now, you know, this is a pretty crisp shadow. And if I want to soften the edges, there are ways of doing that so that it's not too sharp, but because it's an outdoor scene and the shadow is cast by the sun, um, and in this instance, the shadow is pretty crisp, that at the moment it looks somewhat believable. And there are ways to soften, but as I said, there are ways of softening the edge. I can work on this layer or a separate layer, and I can, you know, use the, the paint tool, paintbrush with black. And I can work on the same layer and I can begin to kind of paint in a little bit and, you know, 
make sure that the shadow fits like so. Go ahead and increase the size of the brush a little bit. No, it just has to look believable. You know, maybe that's it. You know, maybe that's all it takes. Now, a couple more minutes left. Um, maybe I want to soften the edge of this. So I'm going to go ahead and make a selection of the shadow. And I'm going to create what is called a clipping mask. OK. And now what I can do with the clipping mask is I can feather the edges of that. And I can soften it. And when I do that, notice, let me really, really soften it. See how the edges are getting really, really soft? They're not a hard edge. I would want it a harder edge, but you may, hopefully you can notice that it isn't, you'd want to soften it just a little bit. You know, the shadows don't have super hard edges. And that's beginning to look somewhat believable in the context of this. And if I need to tweak it further, I can. OK. Does that do it for everyone today? No more questions? No? And I can go over some of these things that I just talked about again on another day. But um, you need, before we finish today, you need to think of a theme. You need to gather your images, make sure that they're, you know, suitable for this project, that, meaning are they large enough? Um, do they have a resolution between 200 and 300 pixels per inch? You know, with a five by seven image or seven by five, whichever you want to make. And then we're set to go. Now remember that you're going to have to add um, text to this. And we'll be covering that a, on a later date, the text using text in here. OK. OK. Well, if there aren't any questions and we're done for today, then I will say goodbye. And I will, um, you guys are free to leave. And I will um, go ahead and pause the recording. OK? OK. So bye-bye for now. Have a good afternoon. And I will see some of you on um, Wednesday.